Device roll refers to the rotation of a mobile device around one axis. In this example, we're seeing an iPad and it's currently in landscape right because the button is on the left and the top is on the right. And the rotational axis would be the Z axis, which is pointing straight down through the middle of the device. When you talk about roll, imagine you're holding your, your mobile device like a steering wheel in a car and you rotate it to the right and to the left. That gives you your roll motion. Now the iOS device reports a number. In the middle, it's zero. If you roll to the right, you get a negative number. If you roll to the other direction, you'll get a positive number. And if we rotate the device a full 360 degrees, we get a range of numbers, from zero to three, and back to zero on both positive and negative numbers. So looking along this line, we know at any given moment exactly what the roll of the mobile device is relative to the current orientation that it's set to. Now that we know how Roll works on the hardware itself, let's take a look at how we would implement this using Playmaker and Unity to move something. In this case, I've chosen uh, this fun little cheesy ship that I used in uh, the camera motion and control series. Bring that back. And uh, I, what I want to do is rotate it. When I rotate the, uh, the iPad and get some Roll data back off of it, I want to roll the spaceship around its y-axis right here. And you can tell it's the y-axis because, you know, here's my numerical data that's updating. If you're not familiar yet very much with some of these axes, uh, really, it's worth your time to get familiar with them. And if you ever wonder looking at a device, you can just grab the handle and, you know, wiggle it and then look over here and see what number has changed. And I just do a undo, command Z here on my Mac to uh, put that number back to zero. So you can just test it really quick and see where you're at in case you're not too comfortable with these axes yet. So we know it's going to be around the y-axis, the axis that I want to rotate. So that's good. And the first step is getting the role information. So I've created a role manager. Again, game object, create empty. And I've put an FSM on it. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look. Pretty easy. First thing I do is start with set orientation. And I'm really got, you remember we talked about these device orientation events in an earlier example. We're putting them to use already. I need to check, are you in landscape left or are you in landscape right? Because I'm going to assume that the user might flip their uh, device over into either one of these. So I sit here and wait in this uh, startup state until the device figures out what state it's in, and then I flow into either the left or right roll detect. And if you look at get device roll, which is what we're going to use here, again, right in device, and get device roll, where you would get that from. If you look at the options, it asks right up top for a base orientation. This is really, really important. Is it portrait, landscape left, or landscape right? Because it needs to know, are we using positive or negative values? Like, should I roll to the right or to the left when you turn the device to the right or to the left? Uh, and also, if you held the device in, say, portrait mode, um, but you were sampling, left and right, it, you would get a weird result because portrait straight up and down would be the same as a, a half, you know, a quarter turn to the right in uh, landscape left or right mode. So you need to set this appropriately for what you think. And that's what I've done here with these two devices. I've made sure to align my FSM with what the device is doing. So I set one for landscape left, and over here you'll see I've set it for landscape right. And on the top of each one, I have a device orientation event where I check to see if the user has flipped over their device again. So in other words, I check both here to figure out where we are the first time. And then in each one, I check again in the, in the right orientation, I check to see if we're rolling left. And in the left orientation, I check to see if we're rolling right. So that way, if the user, you know, I'm getting data about the uh, rotation, the device roll, and the user flips their device over, then my FSM will update and they'll keep getting information the way they expect. Be sure to think in terms of your user flipping the device around, because we all do. Both of them are the same for the device get roll. Uh, I set a global variable called device roll. And if you don't know how to get to global variables, there's a few ways. These are the local variables. 
uh, and you can get to global variables down from that little button, pop them up. You see I've got a whole lot in this project that I use throughout. Uh, you can also get to global variables over here through clicking this little square button here and choosing global variables. That brings you to the same window. And from the Playmaker window, you can get to it from up there. Where we at? Global variables from right there. Nice and easy. I've set up a global variable. I'm using it in both. Uh, and I, I get the angle. I store it in there. You can limit the angle if you would like to, either by a, uh, another variable with a value in it or just putting something in there. I'm not going to limit it at all. And you can put in a smoothing rate if you need to, which will, which will smooth out the event. This, again, this is tuning. You're going to want to play with this depending on your needs. I can't give you a, a best number because it's going to depend on what it is you're doing and how you want it to behave. You might want something to be kind of jagged as it turns. You might want it to be really smooth. Play with this number to smooth that out. And I do want this to happen every frame. I want it to continually get the uh, angle of roll and stick it in this variable every frame. I want that to happen so I get real-time data. That would be all I need to do. For this example, though, I have put a convert float to string and created a local variable here and just output it. So that way I see, uh, if I go back here, I see it showing up right here, rotation and roll. So that way I can see uh, in an example what the rotation is and what the roll is, and I make sure that what's happening is what's happening. I would, of course, delete this before I ever made a game out of it, and I, of course, wouldn't use these assets or anything else for a game, but for this example and for you guys to look around at, this is a great thing to do, output text all the time. I think I've said that a million times now. So now that we have this data right here being stuck in the device roll uh, global variable, we can use it to rotate the ship. So I put another simple FSM on the spaceship itself. Let's look at that. It's one state, comes in at startup, and I start with a sample curve, which I'll talk about in a moment, and I use it to get uh, the number I want, and I store it in the store value, and then just do set rotation on the Y angle of the ship. Because remember, we talked about we only want the rotator on the Y. Finally, I do another convert float to string and output to text, just like I showed you, or uh, these numbers right here. So one's the rotation, which happens on the role manager, and the, or the role happens on the role manager, and the rotation output happens from right here on the spaceship. Now that we have that all set up, let me talk about sample curve, because this is really, really cool. This is not iOS specific. This is something that is in Playmaker, and you may or may not have seen it yet, but it is uh, pretty awesome. You've probably seen these charts that have, um, you know, like a number up and down, which will be how many, I don't know, how many penguins have eaten today, and then a, a, a thing across the bottom, which will say, you know, time, like across the month, and every tick is a day. This is kind of how we have the curve set up here in our window. Go ahead and make that full screen relatively full screen so you can see what's going on. If you look down here, I've got a series of numbers. Okay, I've got a negative 1.5, and then here's zero, and then 1.5. So I have a range of numbers across the bottom. And here, I've got negative 50, zero, to positive 50. That is my range. Let me set up another sample curve so I can play around a little more without ruining what's going on here. Uh, it is in the math section. If you haven't looked under math, let me show you that down here. There is a lot, and I mean a lot of really great stuff in here. And sample curve is kind of down the way. It's math, but don't get scared. Don't worry about it. This is really easy. You enter the curve like I did right there, just by clicking on this big box, and you get access to uh, curves, which is great. Uh, you, you need to start with one of these. I'm going to pick this one right here. Whoa. Oops, <laughs> I clicked off of that. Let me, uh, let me click that again. Sorry about that. I get, by default, a curve, and here it is. And you can see it's got an endpoint here. If you click and hold, it says zero, zero. And I click up here, it's at one, one. Pressing F, you get the full screen kind of view of that. Zero to one is going on up here. And uh, again, we've got zero to one across the bottom. So what you're doing is sampling one number 
from one side and then comparing it to another on the another side and you get this point in between, right? If I were, say for example, doing um, time, let's put time across the bottom, I'm sampling across one second and up here is, uh, say, some value like height. Down here, at zero seconds, the height is zero. And if we go all the way over here to, to one second and go up, the value height would be one. This doesn't mean height and time. It can be any two numbers you want. And in this case, I am checking the roll of the iPad right here, okay? And I am setting a set of numbers I want this way uh, to be the roll in either direction, which, you know, say 45, 50 degrees. And you can adjust a curve. If you've ever used, uh, you know, if you've ever animated in like Maya or used a, uh, you know, a vector illustration tool or anything like that, you'll be totally at home. You can grab these, move the numbers around to wherever you want. You can adjust like ease in, ease out curves kind of, uh, except this way you're sort of tapering the result that you're going to get. It's pretty neat. Now that you've seen that, let's go back to the real example. And here is the curve I've got set up. And let me zoom in a little bit. If you look, here I am. I click and hold. I am at negative uh, 1.5 and 45 right there. And this one is set at 1.5 and negative 45. So what I'm doing with my example is I'm sampling negative 1.5 to 1.5. If you remember the roll of the uh, iPad device, I'm going to turn it to... You know, basically, uh, all the way to the left is 1.5, and all the way around to the right is 1.5. If it went further, we would be changing the, uh, the orientation of the device, and everything would turn around. So that's why I only took it to these values. And up this side, I've got 45 degrees and negative 45 degrees. That corresponds, let me just show you, if I select the ship again and go to Y, right? If I put in, um, just type it in right here. I like that. If I put in 45 degrees, it rotates that way. And if I use negative 45 degrees, it rotates that way. See? So I am changing with this curve. When it's at 1.5 value from the iPhone, it's going to give me a negative 45 degrees here. And zero will line up with zero. And when it's at a 1.5 value from the iPhone, I will have 45 degrees. That's what I'm using the curve for, is to translate and set that back to zero to translate between those two numbers okay i hope that made sense if it doesn't uh just get one of these things into an fsm somewhere and experiment have some fun with it because it really makes sense once you use it it's pretty easy so sample at is asking for a number and remember the device role that we created up here in the role manager right here we're using device role Okay, as a global variable, and we're getting the angle of the rotation of the iOS device. And right here, I'm using that same number, that exact number, and it's being updated every frame. And I'm saying sample at that number. And that means, so if I'm at zero, it's going to sample right here at zero. And if I rotate it to say negative five, then it'll sample here. Okay. And whenever it samples, it goes up until it finds a match from the other side. So right here, at negative five, you can go across and know that our value would be well, probably about 28, 30. Somewhere, well, maybe not 20, probably about 20, that sort of thing. Here at one, if you went up, went over, now we're probably at 30, 35. So you can see how that works. It's just a simple chart that way. So it says sample at that, at that number and then store the result in another variable. And here I've just set a local variable, called it ship roll. And that's what I'm going to use for rotation. I could have called it ship rotation, but whatever. And I do that every frame because, again, I need this to update. And then I set the rotation right here with ship roll. It's that easy. Just right there. This seems pretty crazy, but get in and try one, seriously. And it is so cool. You can do so much with a sample curve. Let's take a look at this running on the iPad. Okay. I've got, uh, here's a little ship running on the iPad, and as I roll the device right and left, you can see the ship's rotating with me. So it's, it's just kind of happening in real time there, which is pretty neat. And remember, that's happening off of a sample curve we're using to translate the roll into the rotation. Important thing to point out here is that I am in 
landscape right, the tops over here and the um, bottoms over here, watch what happens. We keep rotating. If I get to a certain spot in the rotation, the orientation's going to flip. There it is. And look, because we did the did the setup to make sure the rigging works, we flipped it around based upon the rotation of the, uh, or sorry, the orientation of the device, and now it's rotating still left and right as I would expect. And of course, if we flip it back around, there we got right and left. So nothing reversed, nothing went upside down. It continued to respond as the player would expect.